My name is Rakia Williams, and I will be presenting to you my Doctorate of Nursing Practice Quality Improvement Project entitled Improving Influenza and Tdap Coverage Through a Multifaceted Maternal Vaccination Program. Influenza and pertussis, two highly contagious respiratory conditions, continue to afflict pregnant women and infants despite the proven safety and availability of vaccines. In fact, while pregnant women only represent 1% of the total population, they accounted for an alarming 5% of the U.S.'s influenza-related deaths during the 2009 pandemic. The influenza virus considerably impacts fetal development, possibly leading to stillbirth, miscarriage, premature birth, and even death. Likewise, pertussis can cause potentially life-threatening complications in infants, with hospitalization and death occurring most often in infants less than one year old. Fortunately, women's health providers play an essential role in health promotion and prevention during pregnancy and happen to be in a unique position to promote vaccinations and improve outcomes in this vulnerable population. Background Despite evidence-based recommendations by the CDC and ACOG to vaccinate all pregnant women without contraindication, national influenza and Tdap immunization rates remain less than 50% and risks continue to be high, especially in and around the study community. There is currently an increased incidence of pertussis and influenza around the project facility. For instance, during the 2017 peak season, significant influenza activity was detected in most Alabama counties, including the study location and surrounding areas. In addition, there have been 238 confirmed cases of pertussis in Alabama within the last year, with an outbreak occurring in nearby Chambers County, Alabama school system in May of 2017. This is very significant for the project facility because nearly 75% of the clinic population resides in this particular county. Despite the evident risk within this community, the study facility did not screen, offer, or promote influenza and Tdap immunization during pregnancy before the initiation of this quality improvement project. After an extensive review of the literature, it was revealed that an immunization program that includes multiple evidence-based interventions is most likely to produce the most favorable outcomes. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to evaluate the implementation of an evidence-based maternal immunization program that includes a staff educational training session, a clinical reminder, standard protocols, and patient education that aims to improve influenza and Tdap immunization rates among pregnant women in a community prenatal care clinic, with the ultimate goal of reducing the risk of adverse outcomes related to influenza and pertussis in pregnant women and their infants. The overall aim of this quality improvement project was to increase maternal influenza and Tdap vaccination rates by 30% over a period of 15 weeks. The initial and most short-term objective was to ensure that 100% of clinical staff are trained on maternal vaccination guidelines and the standard protocols by September of 2017. The next objective was to increase vaccination screening by 30% by December 1st, 2017. 
The final objective was to improve documented vaccination education to 30% by the completion of the implementation period. Methods. This quality improvement project took place in a small community OBGYN clinic serving mainly Medicaid patients during a period of 15 weeks, starting September 5, 2017 and ending December 1, 2017. A convenient sample was generated from a pool of pregnant women obtaining routine prenatal care at the project facility. Patients' participation in the project was completely voluntary and verbal consent was obtained. The inclusion criteria included only pregnant women aged 18 years and older presenting at any gestation during the current influenza season for those participants being offered the influenza vaccine and between 27 and 36 weeks gestation for participants being offered the Tdap vaccine. Exclusion criteria involved the contraindication to either the influenza or Tdap vaccine or age less than 18 years. There were 98 patients eligible for maternal vaccine screening and education. Only 43 of these 98 patients were eligible to receive the Tdap vaccine, while all 98 participants were eligible for influenza vaccination once the influenza, influenza season began and the influenza vaccines became available through the collaborating pharmacy. A previously mentioned as previously mentioned, this quality improvement project consisted of multiple evidence-based interventions as detailed in the table to the left of this slide. Initially, an influenza and Tdap vaccine protocol was written for the facility, and all of the clinic staff was trained on maternal vaccination guidelines as well as the new protocols prior to the implementation of the other interventions. Clinical reminders were activated in the electronic medical record, prompting the clinical staff to perform vaccination screening and education on indicated patients. The provider's recommendation to vaccinate was incorporated into patient education at the initial prenatal visit as well as subsequent visits. Education included written handouts and verbal discussion of maternal vaccine safety, vaccine effectiveness, and vaccine benefits. Vaccinations were offered for clinic administration in collaboration with the local pharmacy. The clinical reminder was completed if the patient declined vaccination, received vaccination at the present visit, or reported receiving vaccination from another facility. Patients without insurance were referred to the local health department for vaccine administration in order to minimize patient costs. The process map located to the right of this slide describes the typical processes involved in the vaccination program within the project facility on a daily basis. Data collection. Completed patient education, screening, and administration of vaccines were all documented in the electronic medical record. Performance measures included vaccine screening and documented education rates, while the outcome measures consisted of the overall influenza and Tdap vaccination rates. The data was collected from the electronic medical record using weekly chart reviews, preserved on a secure laptop, and analyzed using SPSS statistics software. Descriptive statistics was used to evaluate performance measures as well as other variables characterizing the sample population, while secondary analysis was used to explore relationships between the patient's age, race, vaccine acceptance, and insurance type. 
Comparative analysis was not performed due to a pre-implementation baseline of zero for both performance measures and outcome measures. Results. The mean age of the participants in this study was 26 years. The sample consisted of 53% African Americans, 45% Caucasians, and 2% Hispanic participants. The majority of participants used Medicaid as their primary source of insurance, while 29 participants used a private insurance carrier and two participants were self-paying. For comparison purposes, there was an assumed baseline of 0% for screening, documented education, and vaccination rates due to the lack of a screening process and the availability of vaccines prior to the initiation of the maternal vaccination program within the project facility. The vaccination totals include vaccines administered both within the project facility as well as other locations. For those participants who declined both or either vaccine after education, most reported just not wanting the vaccine. Their educated refusal was not attributed to any particular factor. Nonetheless, the implementation of the maternal vaccination program increased overall influenza vaccination rates by 28.6% and Tdap vaccination rates by 32.6% as shown on this table. Furthermore, the percent of patients screened and educated with a provider's recommendation to vaccinate increased from 0% to 79.6% during the study period. The following tables depict the findings of this quality improvement project in more detail, specifying the occurrence of declinations and missed opportunities in subpopulations as demonstrated on this slide as well as the next slide. Secondary analysis found that African American participants were more likely to have received the Tdap vaccine, while Caucasian participants were more likely to have received the influenza vaccine. Insurance did not seem to affect influenza vaccine acceptance. However, the large majority of participants receiving the Tdap vaccination used Medicaid as their primary source of insurance. In conclusion, the use of multiple evidence-based interventions within a maternal vaccination program not only significantly increased vaccination screening and documented education, but also considerably improved overall maternal vaccination coverage. All objectives were met during the project period except for the overall influenza vaccination rate, which was slightly lower than projected. This may be attributed to missed opportunities and high declination rates. There were no specific indications found to account for the differences in vaccine acceptance based on race and insurance type. It may be worthwhile to include a questionnaire in future cycles of change that addresses the patient's perceptions of the vaccines and why one vaccine may be preferred over others in order to speak to the specific needs of various subpopulations. Limitations of this project included small sample size, short implementation period, which did not include the entire influenza season, as well as the implementation of several new interventions at once. This quality improvement project consisted of new processes for the entire staff as well as the patients served by this clinic. 
Many of these patients had received care in this facility with a previous pregnancy in which maternal vaccination was not a standard of care. It is possible that despite education and provider recommendation, these patients may not view maternal vaccination as a priority simply because it had not been addressed in a prior pregnancy. Furthermore, influenza vaccinations were not available until mid-October, limiting the opportunity to offer the vaccine even further. Therefore, these results do not reflect the true influenza vaccination rate within the project facility for the entirety of the current influenza season. Implications for practice. This study contributes to the clinical knowledge of maternal vaccination, advances the evidence-based practice of clinicians working in the women's health setting, and demonstrates the value of advanced practice nurse-directed quality improvement plans within the clinical environment. This quality improvement project shows that a combination of evidence-based interventions can be used to improve maternal vaccination coverage in the prenatal care setting, ultimately reducing the risk for adverse outcomes associated with influenza and pertussis in pregnant women and their newborns. Therefore, the sustainability of the maternal vaccination program is essential to reducing barriers and improving quality of care in this vulnerable population. This concludes my project presentation. I would like to take the time now to thank you for your interest in my quality improvement project. Your questions and comments are welcome.